Well, that certainly sets the tone for the day. Good morning, and welcome to Mountain Vista Unitarian Universalist Congregation in Northwest Tucson. Welcome to those of you who are sitting here in this unfamiliar configuration, and welcome to those of you who are joining us remotely via Zoom. Wherever you are and whoever you are, we extend to you a very warm welcome. We are better and we are stronger, because you are here. Together, we make a difference. Together, we share our joys and our sorrows. Together, we are a beloved community. Welcome to our penultimate service with our beloved interim minister, the Reverend Dr. Samantha Wilson. I'm Deborah Roberts, yeah. <laughs> I'm Deborah Roberts, I'm a pastoral associate here at MVUU, and I am joined today by my partner in crime, Robin Bausell. Reverend Sand's last service with us will be two weeks from now, but this is my last service with her, as sadly Tom and I will be en route to Glacier National Park on June 19th. I, <laughs> so sad. I do want to say what a pleasure it has been for me to work with Reverend Sam as a PA and how much I appreciate her encouraging me to have a voice and to be creative. Uh, I recently looked back at some of the scripts from my first services as a PA. And by the way, my first service as a PA was the first time that Sam set foot in our congregation. We were at Be A Beautiful Savior. She wasn't preaching yet, but that was her first Sunday visiting us. Um, back then at Beautiful Savior, we basically read from a script that changed very little from week to week. We've come a long way since then. And our services are more varied and PAs play a much larger role. That is due to the innovation that Reverend Sam has initiated 
which I think has made our Sundays both more interesting and more meaningful, something we all appreciate. So thank you for that, Reverend Sam. This um, is our next to the last service because next week the Reverend Christiana Haida will be in the pulpit and then on June 19th we do have our celebration of Sam's um, time with us. Uh, information about that came out in a special e-blast this week. Um, if you did not get that it will be in subsequent newsletters but you can also talk to me or to Robin or to Ann Tatum or to Tom Bunch um, if you'd like informa more information. We're going to be having a new member ceremony today in which six people will be joining our church. We welcome them warmly. We also look forward to hearing more special music from the real John Gary, AKA Andrew Clenard, husband of Reverend Sam. Our theme for the month is play, but it is also Question Box Sunday, which Sam has entitled, Ask Me Anything. We'll see what you come up with and what Sam still has to reveal to us after almost three years of interim ministry. Although some questions will undoubtedly be serious, we also encourage you to be playful. <laughs> Despite the spirit of celebration and playfulness today, we do want to acknowledge that our world is full of sadness and pain right now. In these trying times when so much seems wrong in the world, and when many of us despair when we think about the multiple tragic events that weigh so heavily on our minds, may this space, whether physical or virtual, be a place of refuge and peace. We invite you to name a sorrow or challenge that you are experiencing in five words or less, and Robin and I will be placing stones in the bowl so that we all share in that concern. Um, we're gonna be coming around with the mic. We've divided the room into quadrants and we'll be taking turns, and those of you who are with us remotely will also have a chance to respond. So I invite you now to name your sorrow or concern in five words or less, as I'm, I'm gonna be coming to this part of the room first. Anybody over here? Safety of young ones. All right, what about this side of the room? My son has cancer. Pi's son has cancer. Let's hold for cancer. the health of our neighbors and our friends. Thinking of fire season. Ooh, fire season, fire season. Stress of moving and finding new doctors. I got you on that one. The stress of moving and finding health care. Here. A shooting in South Philly where our son lives. Shooting in South Philly where Tom and Ruth's son lives. Polarity and extremism. Polarity and extremism. We certainly are experiencing that. Aging father-in-law. Aging father-in-law. People who are alone. I'm going to miss Reverend Sam. I'm going to miss Reverend Sam. And finally, this side. Loss of women's voices, Afghanistan. I can come to you, honey. We got time. My wife of uh, 63 years just passed away about three and a half months ago. Oh, Larry. 
passing loved ones and spouses. Poverty in our own community. And we'll add a few more stones for those concerns and sorrows that remain unsaid. Thank you all for sharing that tenderness and openness with us. Well, let's come get the Zoom. Rebirth and resilience of democracy. Thank you, Zoom. As we move forward with our chalice lighting, I'd like to share words with you by David Breeden. In this time of loss, in this time of asking why, we light a flame of sharing. We light a flame of commitment. In this time of why, we light this flame, sign of our searching, sign of our sharing, sign that together we remember. Together we ask why. Together in sadness and joy, we share light. Together we celebrate what we are together. Oh my, they're letting him talk, watch out. Good morning, everybody. Mask beard is a thing. As Deb mentioned a moment ago, today is indeed Question Box Sunday, and I invite people online as well to submit questions through the chat. Happy to have those. The card at each one of your places is intended for questions. Now, this is a great Unitarian Universalist tradition. It is a chance for a minister and a clergy team to assess what's going on in your minds. It's also a chance for you to get any of your questions asked and answered. And it's a good opportunity for us to all get to know each other better, as well as to share information. So if there's anything you've ever wondered about the church, about Reverend Sam, about, well, frankly, any of us. You're welcome to ask Drew questions as well. You're welcome to ask any of us questions as well. But this is primarily about Reverend Sam today. This has also gone through a lot of other places if those of you are familiar with the online forums of Ask Me Anything. So indeed, feel free to ask us anything. There is a card at every seat. I have a few extra cards if anybody needs them show a hand, and we only have pens about every other seat, so feel, please share those as, you, as best you can. And Deb and I will be around, Robin will be around in a moment to collect questions. This is a good opportunity if you've something you've always wondered, something you've always been curious about, about the church, about music, about theology, about anything, feel free to ask us pretty much anything. We have good questions. Robin, would you go ahead? As well as we'll take cards as well. There'll be people in the back. Y'all have cards to uh, collect the questions if we have any from online. And then Deb and I are gonna go sort them and in just a little bit, we are going to ask Sam, well, most anything. Almost, Almost anything. <laughs> oh. She's collecting them. She's, they're passing down the row and collecting them. A couple in the back there. And if we are moving along, then I have the great privilege, privilege of introducing the next part of our thing. Drew, if you would, please. Hello. I'm Drew, and uh, you might have just heard our beloved daughter screaming. 
that was all um, part of the plan. That was part of our plan for this song that I'm going to share first. I wrote this when Joy was screaming one day, and it, it draws on some true events from our short life together. Um, there have been times where we've tried to take Joy to a bar and been asked to leave because they don't allow babies at the bar. Has anyone else had that experience? Okay, good. <laughs> Next, I know somebody has. Yeah, it's okay, you don't have to talk about it. And I also tried to take Joy to a uh, Desert Diamond Casino. Anyone else ever tried to take a baby to a casino before? <laughs> no? Oh, in the back, thank you so much. Here we go. is tall some might say she's small but she's strong like the devil my girl has gotten us kicked out of multiple bars we're banned a desert diamond I guess she likes her living hard and she screams she might be a singer she screams she might be a singer like her dad my girl sometimes we go to the mall we share a giant pretzel, but she could eat it all. My girl, I bought her the biggest bear, cause it's almost time to cut her hair, and it's gonna be a struggle. Cause she screams, she might be a singer. chose me as her dad my girl still 24 inches one day she'll do her own dishes wow Sounds like we're ready. I was going to say, why don't you give that mic to Sam, Reverend Sam, and I'll use this one right here. Are we good? There we are. One more card. First of all, I want to say thank you. There's more questions here than we can possibly answer in one service. The fun part of these questions and looking at these cards is realizing it gets, gives us an idea of what's on your minds as well, too. And so look forward to, even if we don't get to your question or your card today, watch in the newsletter, watch in, I can say, we have one future sermon to expect from Reverend Sam, but look forward in future communications. We will be looking at and thinking about most of these things. So thank you all for some really wonderful questions. I, there's a whole lot of questions today that kind of reflect a certain kind of angst about life. And so let's just dive right into the deep ones. A couple of real ones right here. How do we practice forgiveness in these times of so much violence? Okay, so I'm not buying time for myself, but I'm going to sit just with silence for me. And then I hope what that offers you is also a moment to think of how you might answer this question. Yeah. 
So I have a couple of people come into my mind. One person who's on my mind is John Clark. And I see, John, that you're here. John, John's computer that he uses to join our services doesn't have a camera or microphone. Very convenient, John Clark. Um, but I know John Clark has done some work on different perspectives of forgiveness. And if you're interested in more perspectives, I'd reach out to him, or maybe he can put his research in the chat box. I have a very um, tortured is not the right word. I have an interesting relationship with forgiveness. I actually don't know if forgiveness is your goal. So I, it's almost, um, I think about, for me, the way that I work with this is that if I take forgiveness out of it, forgiving someone, and I let myself ask, what actually, what's, what's my hope or what's my intention in relationship in our world? I actually start to think about what is, um, what's, the, what's the course of the relationship? How do I tend the relationship? And tending relationships actually doesn't require forgiveness. You might have people you love, <laughs> and you may or may not feel forgiveness for, but you keep tending the relationship. So I, I noticed my relationship to forgiveness changed when I worked in a prison. So when I was working in prison, there was a really heavy emphasis on either seeking someone's forgiveness or forgiving yourself. And my experience of the way that forgiveness was being used then was like a bludgeon. And it was like if you couldn't forgive or if you didn't get forgiveness, then it was over. It was like you were meant to kind of suffer in perpetuity. So there was this feeling that if you force forgiveness, it's like forcing love. That's just abusive. You can't force love. Love emerges. Love um, unfolds. Love shows up. And I think forgiveness is like that. It's really cool if you get it. But there's something else at work. And it's something about staying awake to what hurts, whether that's in yourself or another. It's something about feeling that warmth of care and compassion for yourself or the other. It's not about forcing an outcome. And I think there's something kind of cool if you take the forced outcome out. There's space. And we force each other to do anything. It's suddenly you don't, it's like having a teenager. Did anyone ever have one of those? You force anything on a teenager, there's resistance. But if you instead sit and you make space, something emerges. And it might be forgiveness. Cool. It might be something else. Creativity, tenderness, wisdom, clarity. So I, I, want, I don't know where that falls on you when you think about this world we live in. But maybe there's space. How do you know when you give to charity that you are doing good? Oh my God, you don't. <laughs> um, yeah, giving to a charity, how do you know you're doing good? So I think for me, another tricky word in that sentence is good. Um, I'm curious about the words good and bad in my own kind of spiritual thinking. Um, I think what's better than being good is being in relationship. And so it's another one of those things that if I can take out how do I be good right now, if I stop thinking about it as how do I become good or how do I do it right or how can I be perfect, and instead I shift it into what's the next step that allows me to be in relationship? then the feeling changes. So if giving to a certain organization enters you into relationship, good. If it doesn't, don't do it. <laughs> I, I think shifting our orientation to what's good or what's right into, especially for us as Unitarian Universalists, we hold as important the interdependent web of all existence. So then your goal is not goodness. Free yourself from trying to be good. Your goal, our goal, is how do I strengthen, make more resilient this web that I live in for myself and for other people? I have two cards here that I think work well together. One is, do you have a definition of spirituality? And I have heard you speak many times. I still do not know what your theology is or whether you have one. Any thoughts? 
Okay. Uh, so for a moment here, I, in your own mind, each of you, think about your own definition of spirit. And it might actually be that you have an aversion to that word or you have a draw, like you feel drawn to that word, but just notice what your inclination is. Okay. For myself, I hold this is where I'm gonna talk about my theology. Um, and I'm gonna briefly step back, theology. That might sound like a big word. What that word only really means, theo, God, ology, the talk of, dialogue of, and then translate God. Translate God. Some of that, for some of you, that word God is comfort. For some of you, it doesn't fit, change it. Just change it, it's not hard, you can do that. You talk to teenagers and millennials, you know how to translate. So just take that word and then find where it touches you. And so think about what that means is the talk of what touches you, the understanding of what touches you. Now if, you, if I were to poke back at whoever said that and I said, have you heard me talk about what touches me? you would probably shift that question. For me, um, matter, the stuff we're made out of, is remarkable and intelligent. So I, I hold that the bodies we live in, the world we live in, the here and the now we are in together um, matters. It matters. And so when I talk to you of my theology, I'm talking to you about the matter that I live in, the body that I'm in, that what my body has experienced, or the relationships I'm in with other bodies, or the body of this incredible earth and universe and my relatedness to it. And for me, how to stay in relationship to it is spirituality. So the practice of coming here and being with you or the practice of fighting with you <laughs> is spirituality. The practice of raising my screaming child with that sexy man um, is spirituality. The practice of being in relationship is spirituality. The practice of building communities where more people can feel relatedness, that's where my justice comes in, is spirituality. So I wonder what it is for you. For me, spirituality has a real home in relationship, which is probably a topic you're very tired of me talking about. I wonder where it is for you. Where does it where does it come up close for you? When you think of spirituality kind of as related to theology, where are you moved or touched? There's this idea, there's a minister in our tradition, Dandeka, who talks about affective theology, which is when you notice yourself moved. So where in your life or your relationships or your beingness do you feel the move and the shift? I have two quick ones for Drew. Is it true that John Gary is releasing an album entitled The Real Drew Clenard? The real, real John Gary? He's not musical at all. Mm. So I would get a kick out of that if he did. <laughs> and I got a couple questions too. Tell us about your boots. These boots were purchased by dear folks close to me, also known as Sam's parents, mom and aunt especially. And um, I think part of it, part of the purchase was that I am not able to spend the resources on something nice and they were for the wedding. And so they really wanted me to have nice boots. She was looking so good at the wedding, I had to get these boots. That's it. Thank you. Very good Thank answer. you for the questions. One last one in this segment for you, Sam. Would you tell us what have you learned these last three years working with MVUU? Oh, God. Either about ministry or yourself. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Wow. 
I, um, I feel like this is such a broken record and it's just the most authentic thing I can say is um, what it's like to fall in love with a whole community and a community that's like its own ecosystem <laughs> that is in formation and changing and new people are coming and people are leaving. I can't help but see Beth and Gary and Bill and Elizabeth up there. I see you. Uh, so that, that feeling of loving something and uh, loving something that changes. Um, and I, I've said this to you before too, I've experienced uh, congregations in conflict, which is one of the reasons I became a conflict resolution facilitator. So there's something about being with you through some of your conflicts and your changes that has been very healing to me because of your willingness to stay together through so many different kinds of things. So I am, um, I'm very, very grateful that I think I've said those things out loud about conflict, but then being with you for three years and moving through some of the conflicts you've moved through and that you're still here, I'm, I'm, um, I'm very, I feel like it's rubber hitting the road. It, it actually is real, it really happened. And this sense that, you know, I, I think that congregations are incredibly important. It is not an irrelevant thing for a people to come together around common values and a willingness to tend each other's bodies through sickness and into death and to celebrate each other's milestones. That's not irrelevant. And to make a space where that happens here in Tucson on a contested national border in a state rife with polarity, I think you said polarity, Kim, polarization. I mean, what more relevance do you need but to fling your doors open to be the kind of place that brings interdependence into the world. So I think being with you reinvigorated my sense that community is a space of healing as much as it is a place of harming. It can be a place where we heal the things we've learned, but also that congregations and church is still relevant, believe it or not. Um, despite all efforts to the contrary, there's a role for you, and it's a matter of meeting the role. Actually, it's not. Oh. It's offering. So we're gonna take an offering today. We're actually gonna pass the baskets around. And today's offering is in support of UU Jazz. And so the wooden bowls, this beautiful deep wood, those are the bowls that if you put some resources into those bowls, those stay with us. And the woven ones are the ones that kind of move back into the world. And I want to tell you, UU Jazz is one of our state action partners. So they have come alongside us and supported us in so many of our own issues, but they're also our representative at the state level, helping us advance UU values. So as this plate moves around, uh, be, move freely your own offering or let it pass you by, whatever works for you, and just see the kinds of resources and capacity we have when we pool our resources together. And I think as that goes around, Drew's actually gonna play some more music for us. And I think actually I get a guest singer on this one too. Is that true? See? Yeah. to shake that ground slow and our scene will start to shake that ground that bird's melody no, no words, words just sound your voice a melody some days just sound our story might be one with larger ups and downs our story slow. might be more lullaby than talk of the town slow and our seed will start to shake that ground 
slow and our seed will start to shake the shake made a little earthquake when we sent our roots down little body takes shape and take stock of the town we made you so safe that ground is better off that way we made you so safe your imprint's gonna be so great slow our seed will start to shake that ground slow our seed will start to shake shake why don't you try don't you try don't you try growing why don't you try don't you try don't you try growing slow our seed will start to shake the ground slow and our seed will start to shake shake make no mistake you can tear this shit down make no mistake you're an agent to change your slow one that's heard all over town you're slow like water underground slow our seed will start to shake the ground slow and our seed will start to shake shake why don't you try don't you try don't you try growing why don't, don't you, you try don't you try don't you try growing slow our seed will start to shake the ground slow our seed will start to shake shake that bird's melody no words just sound your voice a melody some days just sound slow and our seed will start to shake the ground slow and our seed will start to shake, shake, slow. And they sang until there was no sound, slow. They sang until there was no sound. <laughs> Deborah and Sam, she can sing. Th there was a time when we thought, Ministry's cool, but let's go on the road together and do a show across the Southwest, and we'd call it The Real John Gary and the Reverend. And it was going to be a really good time, but here we, here we are instead, so maybe later in life, yeah. One pleasure that I have here in this last month is a new member ceremony to celebrate six new members joining our community and to honor this growth of the community. Yeah, hi. That's what we're going to do for this Sunday service. Okay. <laughs> Come here. Oh. We're going to celebrate growth in a community together. And all of what it takes for someone to feel safe and loved and belonging. And I want to have one of our screens pop up to celebrate all the folks who joined us during the pandemic. And I'm curious, if you see your face up there and you're in our room, would you stand up if your face is on there? Ooh, there you are. And on Zoom, I, we feel you on Zoom too. Hello, hello. Yeah, clap for him. <laughs> it's so exciting to grow communities together and to build communities together. So Tom and Tom, would you join me?
today Tom Sawyer, our president, and Tom Bunch, our chair of Community Connections, and Joy Lynn Clenard, our professional screamer, and I are excited to celebrate the newest members of our congregation. And we have some slides to introduce them to you. The first is Susan Alexander and Vince, Ale and Vince Sensky. Susan and Vince aren't able to be with us today because of a medical emergency, but we're still gonna celebrate them. Susan has been a member of UU Churches for over 30 years, growing up in Wisconsin across the street from Vince. Her parents exposed her to Christianity and encouraged free thought. She has a degree in speech and English and theater, and she's a retired from the USDA Forest Service, living out some of our fantasies, those of you who wanted to work for the Forest Service. And she's had a variety of positions, including computer programming and webmaster. And Susan and Vince just moved here in 2020. They bought a home and then they came to us. Susan writes a vegan cooking column for several newspapers, cycles, and plays the ukulele. And then on the next, you get to meet Vince. They raised their two children, Emery and Skye, in the UU congregation in Duluth. Although their children defected, they are still beautifully progressive adults in their thoughts and actions. And Vince was raised as Catholic, but started his own journey from church after reading Henry David Thoreau. And when he, and he became a UU, his dad did quip, you turned out pretty good except for your religion. Vince has been a professional photographer, taught in a medium security prison, and is a retired high school stu social studies teacher loves doing the vegan delight ukulele and playing nice with others or making efforts at it. Susan and Vince, we are sending you welcome. Then we get to welcome Lori and Susan over here. Would you stand and then you can sit just so they know where you are. This is Susan and Lori, everyone. <laughs> Lori's a native Long Islander who is happy to be living in Tucson and served in the Air Force and at one point was stationed at Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas. It was there that Lori grew to appreciate the fabric of the desert and chose to retire in Tucson. She was a major when she left the service and served 27 years. In the interim, she moved to Virginia to be with the then partner, now wife, the fabulous Susan. They adopted their beautiful, brilliant daughter, Case, from Sichuan, China in 2004. She was a small four-year-old and has grown into many, many talents, a uh, violinist, geologist, and cook. She just this month graduated from the USC and has the great fortune of now selecting several job offers, one of which is obvious the one that's in Clear Creek. <laughs> their 35-year-old son lives on Long Island, but they're bringing, working to bring him out west. They're happy to be here and be part of this community, Lori. It's so nice to meet you. Susan is a Los Angelina who left California after completing her PhD in 1990. Her mother was so proud of her that she introduced her friend saying, this is my daughter. She's a doctor, but not the kind that helps people. She began a career at Hollins University in Virginia, and in the interim, they adopted Case from China in 2004, who they're very clearly proud of. She's a graduate of USC in geology, uh, and you married your partner, Lori. They've actually been together for 22 years, but it will be 20 years, but they've been married for two. Retired in 2018, they began looking for a welcoming city in the West and happened to read about a theater production, No Pants in Tucson, which premiered in 2021 at ART New York Theaters. The play drew upon sec Tucson's sexist law from the 19th and 20th centuries that made it illegal for women to cross-dress. Wonderful, she thought. A city many decades ahead of others in fighting the concealed trans rights movement. Tucson has so much to offer and she's happy to be here. Lori and Susan, so cool that you're joining us. Joel and Grace, where are you? Oh, in the back. Grace has that fabulous mermaid mask. Flap it around, Grace. <laughs> A true educator. But first, Joel. 
Joel's a newly retired primary care physician who moved re permanently to Tucson with Grace from Washington. He directed the choir of Olympic UU Fellowship and led their contemplative services as well as interdenominational peace choir. After the pandemic put a stop to all that, he was a musician for the virtual services for a year, performing live on guitar with Grace frequently on flute. And that kind of sums it up, he says. What attracted me to the UUs was an eclectic approach to music and the chance to make music come alive. I'm not a very spiritual person, though I try to treat others as I think they would like to be treated. Joel, it's so nice to have you with us. What a treat. And then Grace with La Mermaid Mask, a transplanted New Yorker via California, Guam, and Washington State. Happy to call Tucson forever home. Retired a year ago as a general pediatrician, and children are her raison d'etre. So naturally, she thankfully gravitated to our RE program at MVUU and has been taking care of all of our many kids here. She hopes to see this program grow and include inquisitive, rebellious teenagers. Joel and Grace love the outdoors and are exploring the many desert trails. And when she's not hiking, she's gardening, sewing, quilting, and knitting, plays the flute and oboe, and is a member of the Tucson Concert Band and Tucson Flute Club. They have two adult children. Their son, Jamie, lives in Austin and is pursuing a PhD in biochemistry, and their daughter, Gabrielle, is a social worker in Portland, Oregon. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Mountain Vista. <laughs> With that, I'll invite the four of you up, if you'd like to come up. Well, I'm not, it's not like if you'd like to, I'm telling you. <laughs> if you're, well, if you're willing, you can say no. I mean, and we'll share our mic, so I'm gonna invite you fabulous men closer to me. And this is an opportunity for all of us members and friends and visitors alike to feel out your own commitments to different kinds of communities, whether it's this community or other communities. So membership represents a promise we all make, new members and members longstanding, to covenant with ourselves, one another, and our world. As members, we promise each other to be in intentional relationship and community together. New members, we've given you words to read. You'll speak these words out loud, and Tom will read for Susan and Vince. Susan and Vince enter this community with hope and possibility in their hearts. Their membership today is a pledge to participate in and support our community. We pledge to deepen our own spiritual and ethical life and show up and return to our relationships. We do this by offering my gifts of time, talent, and treasure to this community and its mission in times of togetherness and separation. I covenant to dedicate myself to the spirit of love that flows through this community. I seek welcome as I join you today and in our shared days to come. Congregation, we'll invite you to speak the words that will be on the slides behind me, and Tom, and Tom and I will share with you. Please repeat with me. We welcome you as we were once welcomed. We seek to be open and inclusive. We respect your dignity, your ideas, and your vision in times when it is easy and in times when it's difficult. We seek to be supportive. <laughs> but also when you need us to reach out to you, we ask you to risk showing us who you are where you hurt, and where you are growing. In return, we ask that you recognize our humanity. We will not always live up to your ideals. When we fall short, we invite you to stay in relationship with us and help us more fully 
live our commitment to love. We welcome you as a member of this congregation, this co-created and evolving tradition. Welcome to our shared journey. Yeah. Having been welcomed by your peers, this is your time to sign the book. Your names, your signatures, mark your choice to take responsibility for our community and for our mission of open-hearted engagement, courageous love, and inspiring transformations. I'm gonna invite you to step up with me and to place your signature next to your name. Don't swim away. <laughs> As president of the board, I confirm that you have entered into membership of this congregation. The church is not the building and not the minister. It's us. We rely on all of us to continue our free and responsible search for truth and meaning. In honor of that journey, the Community Connections Committee would like to offer you three gifts. To welcome and inspire, we will be sending you UU World's The Journey is the Joy, introducing the liberal faith of the Unitarian Universalists. In your email boxes, you will soon find a gift certificate to the Unitarian Universalist Association's online bookstore. We hope you find something there that nourishes you at this time on your path. And the talent and time of MVUU offers you one of our very own poetry monographs. Welcome. To bring us into a closing of the ceremony, I want to invite everyone who, um, as you're willing, as you're able, as you feel moved, to go ahead and stand. And I'm going to invite us all to step a little bit closer together. And maybe so that we're almost touching. And find a way to connect the rows going backwards. I've got Monica over here. I've got my foot against Michael. And just notice this incredible connectedness that you've committed to. The counter-cultural decision each week to slow down, to practice relatedness, to feel into what you value, what you care for, what you're willing to let change you. Blessed be this community this community of we can do it, this community of wanderers who are always arriving, this community of willing participants in care and conflict. May your values and your vision of a world made deeper, not perfect, but more deep, sustain you in your years to come through new ministries, new adventures, new hard times, and new revelations together. And may this community grow and expand in its capacity to hold more of the world's pain and more of its joy. In this spirit, we will sing one of your old beloved songs that too is changing, but one last time here together, Covenant Song. 
Those of you who know the words, sing them loudly. And those of you who don't, listen. We can do it together. Right. Question box Sunday, round two. First of all, there's a couple of questions I think I can answer quickly. Bathrooms are in the back hallway here. <laughs> you can get to them through the Oasis room and around that way. Um, there is no potluck scheduled for today. If you're not already on our email list, I recommend that you send us a note and or drop us a card and we'll make sure you get added to our email list so you will know when such upcoming events are happening, like in two weeks. And one last question off of that card. Will you explain briefly to us, Sam? Will you be coming back in the future? How does that process work? Yeah, so we have certain guidelines that help us stay in relationship with each other. And one of these best practices is for a minister when they leave to make really good space for new relationships to begin. So what you can expect at the minimum is for me not to be in touch with you for about two years. Now there's ways that that gets changed depending on the need that Reverend Matthew identifies or that you identify, but that's done in covenant between me and Matthew when he and I think that that would be best. But then after two years, it's a free for all, not really. No, it, it's still about really respecting your ministry with Matthew and me cheering you on, um, but also I get to be a little more in connection with you. Does that make sense? I think so. Good. Okay. Lightning round. Okay. I have a bunch of questions here that are either yes or no questions, or let's try and see if we can answer them in 10 words or less. So Challenging. Let's see how, how fast we can get through this. Should we try to stop continental drift? <laughs> Next question. What was one of your best moments of this past week? <laughs> um, this one right, oh no, yesterday we had a new Connections dinner where we welcomed um, eight new people to come get to know us and it was just a blast. What is your favorite game? Um, writing a sermon on Sunday mornings. <laughs> Sam, what is your favorite song? Uh, of all time, anything written by the real John Gary. I feel like we should ask Drew, what's your favorite song? Of all time? Oh, oh, Glenn Tipton by Sun Kill Moon. Good call. Yeah? Yeah. You've got one cool. person who knows what you're talking about in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those are the best things. The things that you love that maybe you get to share with other people, those are the best things of all. Do you have a favorite drag queen? Oh, I just think RuPaul is a fabulous minister. RuPaul, I watch RuPaul's Drag Race to become a better minister. 
Rue is definitely a, one of the best ministers there are out there. Mm -hmm. How many saguaros are you taking to Oakland? Um, not answering, that's illegal, but we might have a piece of one somewhere. Okay. <laughs> How will you be spending your Sundays starting next month? Um, why am I crying? <laughs> Grateful that I don't have to put anything on <laughs> um, in terms of create something, but man, I will miss you. There will be a hole that although I will appreciate the space of, I will miss you. When you get to California, what's going to be your first meal? Oh, my mom is cooking dinner for us, so I don't even care. It's my mom's cooking. <laughs> what's your favorite thing to do for fun? Spend time with Drew. This is possibly a meatier question, but I'm, I suck it in this round because I'm curious to see if there's a short answer. Have you ever experienced any sexism in your role as a minister throughout your career? Absolutely. <laughs> Do you want an example? <laughs> <laughs> in 10 words or less? Um, I think it's, it's an interesting thing to be a young woman in ministry. I think it's interesting to be anything in ministry is I understand ministry as designed around the idea of a man. Our 1950s conception of ministry is a man with a woman who's able to do all the volunteer work for free on behalf of that man. Um, what I ex embrace and what I feel embraced by here is a deviation from that. And I actually felt like there was a deep um, embrace of a different model. And I think it's still worth always examining the sexism <clears throat> that we have in our own unconscious ways, whether it's commenting on a woman's body or how she looks that day, um, or whether that's talking about uh, if she was too emotional here or there, uh, too emotional in a meeting, too emotional in a sermon, too emotional in a conversation. And while I tend on the emotional, granted, um, it's something to uh, be careful with. Last question in the lightning round. What do you think happens when we die? That's a lightning round? <laughs> Ten words or less. Um, <laughs> return. Beautiful. And I also wanted to say a quick, I have one more question to ask out of the lightning round, but I also wanted to say thank you all so much for so many wonderful questions. We're all going to, I'm going to pass these all on to Reverend Sam, and she will have a look at them, and I'm sure quite a few of them will find their ways working into future things, and this is, you've given us a wonderful idea and a wonderful opportunity to begin to think about what future programs and so forth we can work with and develop here. And now the last question, what is the one question you were hoping someone will ask. Uh, what's it all for? <laughs> Especially this. And how do you remember why you're doing it? Especially this. And that's a question I would have paused deeply on. Why are you doing this? And how will you remember that when it's really hard? There you go. They also wanted you to answer the question, why are you doing this? Great question. I'm not going to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so yes, much, Reverend Sam. Yes. Thank you. One more song. One more song. One more song. Um, the last two were really, you know, more fun baby songs. Um, and this one is a bit heavier, and um, it's about themes of love and death. And there's there's a few lines that I'm actually proud of in it, um, and uh, I'm gonna try to enunciate them for you. Pull 
pulled me from the bottom, but I jumped right back in. Ain't learned a thing since passing kindergarten. I saw the waves, but my baby's looking fine. And I jumped right in there, jumped out of my mind. That kid I am, gotta learn a thing or two. It's the first time that I want to die of old age. Deep love, it's a hundred year flood wave. Life's still a cage, but it's now a bigger cage. And I got this love, is it time for me to pray? And she says, hey, don't you drown too young. It's unbecoming. you drown at all I'm gonna love you a whole long life and so I promised her that I would never die and every man would do the same thing if cornered say anything and just pray for no more corners and then that day when she gets me in the corner I'll say hey my love I'll try not to die young. Not to die at all. I'm gonna love you a whole long life. I think it calls for a turn again, baby. My heart running wild, been lassoing like crazy. Are you my love or a rattlesnake, baby? I ain't had any kind of love. this road too many days and and every night I just keep going crazy I drag myself around up and down but I always come back to the same old town where she says hey don't die Wow. <laughs> uh, briefly before we conclude, I just want to remind everyone who is physically here, there will be cool beverages offered in the Oasis room, and we do welcome you to stay for fellowship. For those of you on Zoom, give me about 10 minutes and I will be there. Also grab yourself a beverage. We're going to conclude with words by Cynthia Landrum, a piece called Be True, Be Well, Be Loving. We leave this gathered community, but we don't leave our connection, our concerns, our care for each other. Our service to each other, to the world, and to our faith continues until we are again together, friends. Be strong. Be well. Be true. Be loving.
Road, 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 road runner, I watched you run away. Road, 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 road runner, you ran my tears away. Oh, my, 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 mom and birds, they love to play. Oh, my, 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 mom and in my head all day. Scrub, 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 Jay, you're getting way too smart. Scrub, 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 Jay, in your little raven heart. Con, con, condors almost didn't stay. Con, con, condors glide effortlessly. She ran my tears away. 